Welcome, brethren. This is Emmanuel Fernandez with uh, Biblical Science, and um, today the Lord put me something on my heart that, like I said, all these videos I like to do, it, there's a lot of brethren out there on YouTube with uh, like a thousand videos, and, you know, most of them just like five minutes uh, long, and stuff that the majority of people are talking about. Like I said, uh, this YouTube ministry I want that I put out, I ask the Lord when I put videos on, make sure it's, you know, things that are not talked about or not talked about enough and put enough time and needs on a particular subject so I don't have to make another video to, you know, expound on that. So the Lord put it on my heart to uh, talk about a topic that it is talked about, but I never heard of a sermon that's dedicated to this particular topic. Uh, what am I talking about? I'm talking about uh, King James terminology versus secular. Now, I made um, a video called Semantics about, uh, you know, the how, what words mean and how the uh, lost world likes to take biblical terms and put it to what they want it to mean and how do they create terms out of thin air and use it for that. Um, one of the reasons why I know I'm saved is it's it's very simple. It's what comes out of my mouth, what words I choose to use. And 90, I'm not saying 100% of the time, but 90% of my t time, every word I choose it's in the Bible. It's in the King James Bible. So that's what this video is about. It's about uh, King James terminology, the words you should be using, the words you should not be using, telling you what these words really mean from the Bible and what the world thinks it means. Now, this video is primarily for saved people because, believe it or not, I see this happening with saved people more than the lost. Um, I see this happen more than say people are lost. Like, I watch these guys' videos and I know he's saved, but why is he using that word? Does he know what that word means? You know, uh, the Bible says, you know, out of the same mouth comes bitterness, cursing, and truth. Because don't forget, the Holy Ghost is what guides you what to say. The Holy Ghost doesn't speak through you. I'm not possessed by the Holy Ghost, I'm controlled by it. So he's the filter. Make sure what comes out of your mouth is pure. Remember, every 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 word of God is pure. That's in the Book of Psalms. So your speech is everything, because faith cometh by hearing, and in the hearing of the word of God. So, and who hath ear, let him hear. So your speech is everything. That's why I said the Bible says that your speech be seasoned with salt. And some grace, so you ought to know how to answer every man. How can you do that when you're using, how can you evangelize the lost world when you're using the terminology of the lost world, whether you know it or not? I know this is not, this is done mostly through ignorance. They don't know the words you're using are of the lost world, but don't worry about it. This is what this video is about. And the Lord put it on my heart to make this video because too much is given, much is required. What I'm saying is it's not mine, so I have no right to keep this to myself. I have this right to give it to people who want to hear it. So who is this really for? Whoever wants to hear it, that's who it's for. So I don't have nothing written down. I don't like planning these videos because I guarantee God, Lord will direct me off course. So. I just let the Lord guide me on what to say, but I'm just going to go off the top of my head, which is really God's head, because all wisdom comes from Him, on the words we use in the lost world. This is for the saved and unsaved people, and what the words you should use. Now, like I said, I made a video about this called Semantics, but this is not Semantics. This is King James Bible terminology, because you said you're a Bible believer. You know, King James is your final authority. Well, why don't you speak like the words God's use? Why are you using the, I'm talking to save people. Why do you use the words that the lost use? So, 
that's what I'm going to talk about. So, I mentioned this before about getting more detail. Homosexual, that word does not exist. Back in Bible times, 1700, where, you know, AV 1611, where, uh, when the Bible was first uh, uh, completed, uh, probably all the way up to 1800s, I think that was that term came into effect around 19, I don't, I don't know, 1940, 1950, but homosexual, I don't know if you were aware of this, I'm talking to lost them to say that was never in existence. That word came out of thin air. If you're a King James Bible believer, you really are. You use the term sodomite. You don't say homosexual because that doesn't exist. So when I'm talking to someone, they use homosexual, whether saved or not saved, that light goes in my mind saying, is this guy saved or not? If you say, why are you using the term homosexual? If the Bible is his final authority in faith and practice, you need to you need to speak in Bible terms. I'm not saying you're not saved. I'm not saying be careful. Because how can you be a living testimony for God if you're not using God's words? Good testimony. Holy, a living sacrifice. Holy and unblameable and unreprovable. Well, if you're using the world's secular terms, you will be reprovable. Because this is the proof right here. I'm reproving you with this video. So you got to be careful with it. Now, don't, don't tell me I know how it is. Because a lot of times I say the words that just flies out the handle like human being, which I know what it means, but I say it anyways, why? Right? Because we got to shake off this subconscious programming. Subconscious, remember, subconscious means you don't know the words what you're saying. Even though you do know what the word means, you still say it anyway. So let's tackle human being. Human being, again, I see it in all movies. They don't, they don't use that term lightly. They know what they're doing. Human being means God-man. You was a druidic god. So when you said I'm a human being, you're calling yourself a God-man. Doesn't matter if that's what you mean or not. I'm just saying, watch your words. Okay, you're reprogramming yourself. Okay, I already told you, words are powerful. Okay, as a man thinketh in his heart so easy. So, you're not a God-man. Why don't you use mankind? I mean, I have a Bible app. If I, I don't have to search for it. I know I'm not going to find the term human being in the King James Bible. My friend in the NIV, I'm not going to find the term human, human being in the King James Bible. You is a, means God, God man. Okay? Humanism is a religion of God, uh, man becoming God. So it's another word I'd be seen thrown, in, thrown around. You're not a you're not a God man. Uh, there's another one. Uh, community Funny how community sounds a lot like communism in mean, communion. Okay, if you're a Christian, uh, you don't use community, you use neighborhood because the word neighbor, love thy neighbor, is in the Bible. I live in a neighborhood, I don't live in a community. Technically, I do because this is a communistic nation, but you know what I mean. Use the proper term terminology, so you say neighborhood, not community. Um, <clears throat> Use uh, mankind and not human, male, female, because that's in the Bible. I used to thought male and female is only reserved for animals until I saw it in the Bible. See, I go with what the Bible says, not by what man says. The Bible does have the words male and female in the Bible. So, why are you being so nitpicky in, in, in all the words? Because it's, like I said, you're a living testimony. There's people out there, you know, that follow King James Bible terminology, and they're not going to hear what you're saying if you don't use their words. Okay? Because there's a lot of saved people that are saved, but they're talking like the word. They're using the words, you know, uh, heterosexual, rapture. There's another one, rapture. The term rapture is a Latin term. Okay? It, uh, it, it's from the Greek carpazo, it means caught up. I'm saying, oh, you don't believe in the rapture. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, don't not use, don't use that word, because that that word is not in the Bible. Use you, well, what does the Bible say? Well, it says blessed hope. There's some people that use the the appearing of Jesus Christ. No, that's the description. Blessed hope is the title. I'm looking for the blessed hope, Titus two thirteen, I believe. Looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Okay, when you use rapture, now of course. But if I keep listening to someone, yeah, I know he's using rapture, but he's obviously saved. I don't think he's aware, though. What does that mean? Okay, don't don't get it, you know, messed up. 
that just because you use that word, oh, I think he's not saying, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, be careful what you use, because some people might think that. Okay? That's why I always ask when I'm talking to anyone, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? You, you, say, you use this word, what do you mean by that? So, yeah, rapture is one. Trinity, that's not in the Bible. That's a Romish term. I use what the Bible says, Godhead. God's God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I use Godhead. I don't use Trinity. Okay. Well, don't forget, God judges you in every idle word. Remember? Uh, I think it's in one of the Gospels. Every idle word will be judged. So, if I didn't, if I felt this wasn't really important, I want to make a video about it. It is important. Every God has a transcript of every word you say, every thought you think. Okay. So it doesn't matter to God whether you're using it correctly or not, whether you know the, what it means or not. Use King James Bible terminology. I know someone really reads the Bible every day by the words they choose. I really do. You're supposed to sanctification is by daily daily word in prayer. So I know if you're the people, I know who really reads the Bible and really studies and really is a Berean. I'm not going to tell you what that means because if you read the Bible, you should know what it means. But I know who really meditates in the Word by the words they choose. Okay? So we have Trinity, we have Rapture. What's another word? <clears throat> A lot of words out there. I mean, let's talk about the. Now, let's flip it. Let's talk about the words that we do use that's in the Bible but loses meaning. Because, like I say, you can just because you use a word that's in the Bible doesn't mean nothing. It means nothing if you don't know what it means. What do you mean by that? I'll tell you what it means. Jesus Christ. I had a cousin of mine that he said he's saved because I believe in Jesus Christ. Like I say, question everything. What Jesus Christ are you talking about? There's a lot of, of them. A word loses meaning when everybody uses it. What do you mean by Jesus Christ? There's a lot of Jesus Christ. There's a Jesus Christ of the New Age. Jesus Christ the Mormons, Jesus Christ the Muslims, and Jesus Christ the Catholic. Well, what Jesus Christ are you talking about? You're talking about the one in King James Bible? Like I said, you can just because you're using King James terminology, you have to use it correctly. Okay, in the proper context. Another one that's word that uses all meaning is love. When you say you love him, what do you mean by that? There's love that the world thinks, which is take care of someone caring about someone and doing nice things, so that's not love. To me, that's caring. Love from the Bible is pain. It's three things. Love is pain, sacrifice, and telling the truth. Now, who, who do I think of in the Bible that suffered a tremendous amount of pain? He sacrificed himself and always told the truth. Oh, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world. Okay? Sad but true, but there's only three people I really truly love in this world. That's my mother and father and my when a cousin of mine because I told them the truth that you're going to hell. You're on the way to hell. Why? Because I love them. So if you truly love someone, you tell them the truth. Hey, you you're on the way to hell, man. You need to accept Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. Okay, when you so many words, this, these words are losing meaning because everybody's using them. Saved is another one. I'm saved. He's saved. We're all saved. What do you mean by saved? Okay. You have to question. This is why they hate Socrates, because he questions so much. So he's, so the Greeks said, question this poison right here. Drink it. Don't like people asking questions. Well, I'm sorry. I'm going to ask questions, because I, I want to know what you mean by what you think you mean by that word saved. I'm saved. He's saved. Well, the meaning by the King James Bible, saved is someone that has repented. Godly sorrow worketh repentance, which means salvation, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. To me, that's the what it means to be saved right there. Well, there's no belief. Well, the devil believed in Jesus. Is he saved? That Roman centurion that said, truly this man was a saved son of God. He believed in Jesus Christ. Is he saved? No. I believe repentance is belief. They're two sides of the same coin. Repentance is faith. You can't have one without the other. That's like saying I have a father but no mother. I'm talking about biologically speaking. That's impossible. For me to physically exist, I have to have a father and a mother. 
Well, what about our fertility cl clinics? Still have to have sperm from a male person. Can't have one with the other. So, repentance comes first and then faith. Okay? The demons that Jesus cast out of that man said, We know who you are. You, you are the Son of God. Are you going to send us to hell right now? Demons believed in hell. They believe in Jesus Christ. Well, they must be saved. No. They didn't repent. They refuse to repent. They can't repent. It's too late. <laughs> They're going to hell. Repentance. That's another word. Tossed around. Yeah, I repented. What do you mean by repentance? There's three types of it. Two is of God. One is of the world. I can commit a crime. And I said this before. I'm sorry I'm repeating. But it fits into what I'm saying. I can commit a crime. And once I get caught. Like they say, you know, you don't truly feel sorry until you get caught. And still repent. That's still called repentance. But that's worldly repentance. I can't believe I got caught. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm an ambassador to my family. That's repentance, believe it or not. That's worldly repentance. That's not repentance of the Bible. Godly repentance worketh sorrow. Repentance to salvation. Okay, that's another word I'll be throwing around. Okay. Godly repentance is what means salvation. That's the first one. You have the worldly sorrow. That's not from God. What's the third one? Repent. Notice I use it as a verb, not a noun. That means to turn from sin. Repentance is after is before salvation. Repentance, repent is after it. You can't uh, you can't turn from your sin uh, before salvation because you don't want to. You're of the world. You love your sin. It's only until you come to that state, state, now repentance, and then you repent. Okay? Use the word properly. There's people say, okay, I repent from sin, and it gets me, I don't even know you're saved now. You're not using the word in the proper context. So, yeah, repentance is a word I've been throwing around. That's not properly used. That's what this video is about. Make sure you know what you're saying. Make sure you know what the words mean, and make sure you, it is in the King James Bible. Okay? Um, let me go ahead, since I'm talking about the Bible, let's go ahead and go in the Bible and see if there's any other words. I mean, because I'm not going to talk about King James terminology when not going in the King James Bible. So I'm not, I'm just going to, like I say, I haven't written this down. I'm just going to go flip through the Bible and just see words that people should be using that I don't hear, I don't see them using. There's another word, Universe. If you, if you, I, I have to uh, enjoy atheists because they use King James Bible. They use words that prove God exists, and they're not even aware of that. If you're an atheist, you use the word universe. Universe, you know, yeah, I believe the universe comes comes came to existence because of Big Bang Theory. Well, you don't believe in God, right? Why why are you using King James terminology? Do you know what universe mean? Uni means one. Verse means sentence. You know, you live in a spoken sentence, and God said, "Let there be light." You're not. You're atheist. Why are you using King James Bible terminology? Don't use the universe. Use something else. Use world. It's funny how world, when you drop the L, it's word. Is that funny? World, W O R L D. Just drop the L. You have word. That's, that's, I think that's very funny. And woman, it's you put you put a W O M put a B after that you have womb. Well, of course, Adam the woman came from Adam's womb from that lower rib. That's where you get that word from woman. Female, male, you can also use that too. Now I'm not saying uh, you have to use. He said use King James by uh, terminology. So I should be saying thee, thou, thine. No, use some spiritual discernment when I in the that age. Okay. I'm a dispensationist. That's the only way you can read the Bible. That's another term you should be using that I don't hear used a lot. When I hear someone use that word, hey, that, there's a guy, I don't know if you say it, but there's a guy that knows his King James Bible, though. He just reads it. The lost world. See, these words are foreign to a lost person. Dispensation. Berean. Hermeneutics. That's not in the Bible, but that's a word I know that you, I know you're using the King James Bible. That you read the King James Bible. What's dispensation? Like I said, if you don't read the Bible through dispensation, 
the Bible is a mess. It's confusion. And the devil is the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion, but a God of peace. So, like I said, you, you give me, I'm not trying to brag, but you give me in a room with a, someone that professes to be saved. Christian, that's another watered down, diluted word. What do you mean by you're a Christian? What does that mean? Ask that to someone. See the expression of it. Well, what do you mean? Of course, I believe in Christ or Jesus Christ. Question needs to ask. Question, question. The, but don't question the word, though. This is pure, absolute truth. But other than the word, yes, question everything. The Bible even says, question yourself whether you're saved or not. You may examine yourself to see if you examine yourself to see whether or not you're in the faith. You should be you should be questioning everything but the King James Bible. That's your obligation. Try the spirits to see whether they are of the world and what of God. Because those who mind the flesh will mind the things of the flesh, and those of the spirit mind things of the spirit. So, yeah, if you put, like I said before, you put in a room with someone for about 15 minutes and just by the words they use, I know if they're saved, they're on the way to being saved, or they're definitely not saved, or depending on what they use, they might be, you know, saved, but backslidden. They, they just got saved. Okay? Okay, the terminology, how you use it and the way you use it tells me a lot. It should tell another person a lot about, so this guy saved, this guy should be uh, fellowshipping with, you know, church. That's another one. That's a real good one. You want to know if someone's saved? Ask them what church means. What do you, when you say church, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Ask a Jehovah Witness what church means. What, what do you mean by church? What do you mean by church? Well, any Bible believer, King James Christian knows what a church is. He's You're looking at one. This body of mine is the church. For ye are laborers with God, ye are God's building. The temple of the Holy Ghost dwelleth in you. You know what this is called right here, since we're talking about words? Forehead. No, this is your temple. That's what it's called. That's the that's the secular term. That's the part of your, this part right here, that's what's called, the temple. Oh, you hit me right in the temple. I knew that when I was unsaved. That's what it's called right here. It's funny, that's where your pineal gland is, the third eye. I believe that's where it is. It's in the middle of the left and right brain, the hemisphere. Right in the middle there, left and right. Temple. So that's what you're saying, where the soul is? Yeah, I think the soul is physically in your pineal gland. That's why they call the pineal gland the seat of the soul. Vatican knows all about the pineal gland because they have the biggest statue of a pine-shaped cone in the Vatican. They know all about it. Now, I'm not saying you should open it because that leaves a demon possession. A lot of New Agers want to Mess around. I'm, not, I'm saying don't mess with that. I'm just saying that's proof that your divine being, your godlike being, where it's absolutely ridiculous why the God calls you a fool if you believe there's no God. Explain the pineal gland to me, please. Okay? Okay. If thine eye be single and full of light, you be in you it's with light. If you if I, thine eye be dark, you're full of darkness. It says I in the Bible. See, I read the Bible literally. You know I'm a terrorist because I read the Bible literally. I saw a documentary where governments are against people who take the Bible literally. Okay? So, this is another term I've been seen misinterpreted. I'm a man of God. No, you're not. You're still alive. You're not a man of God. For the sincere milk of word, you, you are babes in Christ. You are Christ's children. See, I take that literally. I don't care if you're 100 years old and you're saved. You're not a man of God. God's eyes are still a child. We're all children. Children of the day, children of the night. I take that literally. He's not using a figure of speech. Okay? Take it literally. You're a man of God when you're dead. That's when you have the mind of Christ. Now you are a man of God. You're grown up. Okay? You're a child. We're all children. Saved or not. We're all children. That means we can be easily misled if we're not meditating on the word daily. Okay? So, yeah, you have to be careful about words, language, because the power of life and death is in the tongue. How many, how many passages of the Bible talks about the tongue? No one can tame the tongue. The, the tongue is full of un, it's an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. 
Tongue is a foul world of iniquity. Don't you think God knows how powerful the tongue is to be conscious of the words you use? You can only be conscious of the words you use if you read the Bible every day. Okay? Uh, you don't use the word uh, uh, race. Okay? You say kindred. That's what the Bible uses, my kindred. Paul, Paul's a Jew. He calls his race of Jews my kinsmen. Okay? Now, I might show some grace to someone that uses that, you know, but that's the secular term. Remember, we're not of the world no more. We live in it. We're not of it. What does that mean? It means that, you know, I have to get a job because I'm unemployed right now. Who should not work, shall eat? I have to be in the world. So I have to do what the lost world does, get a job and work like that. But that doesn't mean I have to talk like them. That's being of the world. Talking like them. Okay? Doesn't matter if, doesn't matter even if I'm saved. If I'm saved, I gotta talk like I'm saved. Okay? There is such thing called spiritual entropy. That I heard my brethren uh, Eric Phelps says. What does that mean? Well, as you know, second law of thermodynamics, things break down. Physically and spiritually. So I know if I don't read the Bible for just three days, or I don't pray for just three days, Guess what? I don't want to be degrading spiritually and talk like the world really quick. I'll be start using those worldly terms. Before you know, I'm back to sin, back into iniquity. So, so I mean, let's talk about words that are demonized. That that's it's not in the Bible, but that's where I am. And those I can't think of the worst demonized words they are than racist, sexist, and bigot. Guess what? If you think you're saved, you better be all of those three things because Jesus Christ was. Okay? They are Christians that try to use euphemisms and tone it down. Say, no, I'm not a racist. I'm, I'm a racist. I'm just not a hateful racist. No, I will not compromise and sugarcoat that word. Yes, I am a racist because God knows I'm using it properly. Okay? The proper way to use that word is he prefers his own race. That's it. Now, my race is superior than, than everybody. It's just I prefer my own race. When I get married, God willing, it will be to a woman of my own race. That's all that means. I'm a sexist. Yeah, you better believe I'm sexist because it's a, it is a man's world. Like James Brown says, it's a man's world. Okay? He's right on that. That's an unsaved person saying that. I don't know if he was into you say, but he's right. Okay? Saudi Arabia, go tell them that a woman rules the world like they rule this <laughs> country. Okay? Believe man is the world. And just, I'm going to even go to the Bible to back that up because uh, some things are so obvious you don't need to quote the Bible to know. Of course it's a man's world. What country is ruled by women? Well, that 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 is, I'm talking about behind the scenes. Okay, I know Germany has a female, whatever, president, but we already know it's a Jesuit order that rules the world, and they're not women, they're all men. Okay, they use, they go opposite of the Bible. Of course, they're going to put a female president because they're against the Bible, but she's run by a man. Come on. And of course, I'm a bigot. I am the truth and the way and the light. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Jesus Christ was a bigot. Sexist, racist, like he was in the to that Phine that Canaanite woman when she said, "Help my daughter, uh, help my daughter, cause she's vexed with the devil." Jesus Christ first ignored her. That's a sexist thing to do. That's what they used to do back in the old times. You don't, you're not obligated to talk to a woman if she stops you in the middle of your conversation. You're not obligated to talk to her. That that is in Saudi Arabia too. Go. You American women, go to Saudi Arabia and interrupt a man while he's talking to another man. See what happens. He'll back smack you so hard, blow be full of that. Is he righteous to do that? Maybe not, but is he righteous to say, hey, can you, can't you you see I'm talking to someone? Yeah. The woman is a weaker vessel. That's in the Bible. So he ignored her. He ignored her actually, I think, twice. Because his disciples actually came and said, can you send her off? We're trying to evangelize the Jews because that's where he was sent. I was sent, but to the... Uh, to the house of Israel, called her, Jesus Christ called her a pet dog, you're a Gentile pet dog, I was sent to say, yes, the world benefited from what I did, but I was sent to, we know who we worship because the salvation is of the Jews, 
What a racist guy, Jesus Christ. And he was sexist, he ignored that girl. And he said salvation is only from of the Jews, bigotry. So no, I'm not going to back down and change those words and explain myself. God knows the, the proper term that I'm, I'm using those words in proper context. So yeah, you better be a racist, sexist, bigot. You're not saved. Or you're cowardly. One or the other. You're a cowardly Christian. Or you're not saved. Okay, because Jesus Christ was a sexist, racist, bigot. And don't tell me he wasn't. Okay, so be careful of the words you use. Well, how do I know if I'm using the right word or not? Read the Bible. That's why I say get a Bible app. If you have a smartphone like me, well, he said this word. Let me run a search here and see if that's in the King James Bible. No, it's not in the Bible, so I don't think I should be using it. Oh, he said this word. Let me search it. Okay, it is in the Bible. Is he using it in the right context? No, he isn't. This is all, be careful of your words, because words are powerful. Okay, if you're saved, you're a priest. A priest is a person of authority, so don't you think his words are going to be carefully scrutinized? Just like you're scrutinizing my words in this very video? Yes, I think you are. So, you know, I end with that. Be mindful of the words you use, okay? Okay, because if words wasn't a big deal, then why God just says, go ahead and cush and say any bad word you want? God doesn't think, no, speech doesn't matter. As long as you get them saved, go ahead and use the F word and S word. Just, as long as you get them saved. No. Let no filthy communication proceed out of your mouth. Because God knows how important words are because I'm made out of a word. I'm made of God's holy word. I told you we live in a simulated reality. This matrix of all matter, which matrix is, by the way, matrix. Do you know that's in the Bible? That's in Numbers? Well, what does that mean? It means a lot of things. Uh, in the place where everything is formed, that's one of the meanings. And for those who know science and know their Bible, knows that we live in a digital simulation that all matter is made out of God's Word. It's the matrix of all reality. Max Planck said that. An unsaved person, not me. He said this 99.9 .9 free space is the matrix of all matter. Well, he must be saved because he, he used the, the word that's in the Bible. And I don't hear a lot of Christians, I don't, I doubt, a lot of saved Christians know that Matrix is in the Bible. Uh, you must be using NIV or King James. No, it's King James, trust me. I was stunned. That was in the Bible se several times, more than once. Why? Because God wants you to know you, li you live in a digital simulation. Okay? I read it literally. If you don't read it literally, of course you're not going to believe that you live in a digital simulation, a fake reality, a Matrix. You're in the Jesuit Matrix because... You allegorize the Bible more than you should take it literally. And that's from Origin, a guy that originated from Alexandria, Egypt. He's responsible for you allegorizing the Bible. So when you read a scripture that says, the world is framed by the word of his power, of course you're not going to take it literally, but I am. The universe is framed by his word. That's literally. He uphold, He's upholding all things by the power of his word. That's literally. Okay, a proton, electron, neutron spins, you know, the got the nucleus, you got a proton, electron spinning in that speed of light. But what's holding that together? Why doesn't it just dissipate and spread apart? Well, God's holding it. He's upholding it. You're taking that literally? Well, that's how I'm supposed to take it. My hermeneutics is on point. Yeah, I just use a slang term right there. I'm on point. See what I mean? I'm not perfect like you. Yeah. And he, was, and he was before all things, and by him all things consist. That's a scientific term. He's holding everything together. You know I can just disintegrate right now if God chooses? What do you mean by disintegrate? Well, like I said, I watch movies for this purpose right here to illustrate my point. If you watch X-Men 3, The Last Stand, if you guys remember Jean Grey, how she, just by her thoughts, everyone disintegrated. Well, remember, man is God? Oh. That's what X-Men is all about. Man being God, evolution, and all that. But, yeah, God, if he wants, he can say, you know what, I'm tired of this universe. I'm just going to stop those proton and electrons, you know, being uh, revolving about around the nucleus. I'm just going to stop it, them from revolving and just let everything disintegrate and just vanish. Well, you can't vanish because, as you know, there's not three states of matter. There's four states. Remember, everything you learn in school is wrong. Everything. 
science, biology, math, everything's all wrong. There's no three states that matter. And I thought it was three states. There's four states. Four solid states that matter. Solid, liquid, gas, plasma. What's plasma? Plasma is that. just God's word. Remember, he spoke in things into existence. And God said, let there be light. He didn't mold things with his hand. Hey, there's the earth. He said it. Jesus Christ, throughout all the Bible, every just about every miracle he performed come from his words. Lazarus, come forth. He woke up. He didn't touch him and he just got up. Spoke. Spoke to that woman. Your daughter's made whole. Did he bring did he say, bring your daughter here and touch him? Or here, perform a ritual? Like all these Babylonian high priests called Catholic priests and the Pope do? With the Eucharist? No. By his word. That's why I know I'm not God because I can't do that. By my words, I can't speak things to existence. You know? Okay. Make, uh, talk, uh, make me understand thy precepts so I can talk about your wondrous works. He sure did. And the, the video is this evidence. Okay? So, I mean, yeah, if you read the Bible literally, King James Bible literally, until, of course, you use some common sense, like when Jesus says, He who eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood has eternal life. Well, he must say, take it literally. Christians are candles. No, use some discernment, hermeneutics. That's a figure speech. Okay? Okay? That's how I know I'm saved because the Holy Ghost tells me, okay, do not take that literally. Okay. He's not a door you literally walk through on the door of the sheep. But take this literally. He's upholding all things about the power of the word where I guarantee most saved people take figuratively. Okay. Your digital simulation, okay? This is why I say watch movies, because Matrix is more than just a movie, it's a documentary. Okay? You live in a digital simulation. Electric universe as Chuck Missler, a saved person, has a documentary about in YouTube. So Accept it. You're supposed to obey truth. Endure sound doctrine. Endure means accept it. Okay, don't don't act like everything in the Bible you just accept. Oh, accepted. No problem. No, there's some tough things that you gotta accept. Okay? Some tough things like God doesn't want you to race mix and sorry blacks, you are a subordinate race. You have to be subordinate with I wanna really get people mad. You're supposed to be subordinate to the whites and shamanic race, curse of Canaan. And for God said to Canaan, since you slew Abel, you be a servant to the brethren. Deal with it. Okay. Will I have the guts to say that if I was white? Probably not. Okay. Eric Phelps is. He's white and he has the guts to say it. And I'm supposed, when he first said it, I had a real problem with it. But was supposed to endure, accept it, sound doctrine, obey the truth, not just love. So when someone around, like David Icke, who I already know he's not saved because he says he's Jesus Christ, which is a Jesuit coadjutor, and he talks with demons, I'm, I'm ordered, I'm commanded to obey all truths. So when he says we're living, living in a digital simulation, I'm going to take him for his word. Whether it be good or evil, obey the voice of the Lord. You know, this 70th week of Daniel that's coming up, it's not Jacob's trouble. The 70 weeks of Daniel, Jacob's trouble is the last part. Beginning of the sorrows is the first three and a half years. The uh, desolation, the abomination of desolation is the midpoint. Jacob's trouble is the last part. A lot of people use Jacob's trouble as the whole. No, it's only 70th week of Daniel. Okay, it's not Jacob that prophesies. It's Daniel, 70th week, 7. Two God's favorite numbers, as you know, is reading the Bible. There's only someone that reads the Bible knows this is seven and three. Seven vows, seven judgments, seven days in a week. Uh, you know. Seven days for him, seven day he rested. Triune triune God three. So people saying when you keep saying tribulation tribulation period of cut well, what do you mean by tribulation because that's a descriptive term the title is seventh week of daniel again 
use the right terms and the right correct thing. It's 70 week of Daniel. It's not the great tribulation. It's not Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble is the last three and a half years of 70 week of Daniel. Beginning of sorrow is the beginning. It's the beginning of sorrows. I take that literally. So there's a lot of people say, oh, the first three and a half years is going to be a time of peace. No, it isn't. Sorrows. That means it's not going to be good. It's going to get worse. Compared to Jacob's trouble, the Gideon of Sars will be a walk in the park. <laughs> so, yeah, wrap it up. Make sure you're mindful of the speech you use because God's going to judge you on it. Every idle word will be judged. Every idle word, every word, every thought will be judged. Saved or unsaved, you'll still be judged. Just because you're saved doesn't mean your, your idle word is not going to be judged because God's going to be like, when you use this word, knowing you meant well, but you use it incorrectly. Now, because of that, you... You made your brother stumble, which I forbid you to do. Do not, for when he uh, sinned against the brethren, you wounded his weak conscience, and you sinned against Christ. That's my point right there. Choose the words you use. So when I'm saying Jacob's trouble, Jacob's trouble, in terms of uh, in describing the seven-year tribulation as tr Jacob's trouble, I could be someone that just got saved. Hmm, Jacob's trouble. I know my above. That means the last last uh the last part so is this guy mid trip trip pre trip post trip because it's 70 week of daniel it's not jacob's trouble a lot of people that use the whole 70 week of daniel and say i'm pre jacob's trouble i would say oh you say you're pre jacob's trouble right so that means you're mid trip no i didn't say that well god breaks up 70 week of daniel in three parts beginning of sorrows that's the first part one the abomination of desolation, rebuilding the, two, the Hebrew temple. That's two. Jacob's trouble is the third part. It's not the whole seven. It's the third part. So when you say, I'm pre-Jacob's trouble, are you, are you mid-trip? I'm pre-70 week of Daniel. That's the only title in the Bible that God wants you to use to describe the whole seven years. Not Jacob's trouble. That's the last part. How do I know this? Well, who... Remember, when the Antichrist comes into power, he's not the devil. He's controlled by him. When he, he's slain, which I do believe will be by the Jews. Why break tradition, right? When he's slain by the sword wound, they're going to blame it on Jews, agitate, get him anti-Jewish fury. And, of course, he's going to rise from the dead in the third day. Sounds familiar? And now he is a devil. Anyone knows the devil, he know, you know who he hates the most. Keyword who? The Jews. Yes, he hates all Christians. He hates the Jews the most. That's why in that period it's called Jacob's Trouble because the devil takes all his attention away from the world, the first three and a half years, to Israel, which is Jacob. Okay? Jacob's Trouble is the three and a half years, not the whole seven years. Brian Dunn lingers. Sorry, I'm talking, referring to you because he refers the whole seven years as Jacob's Trouble and the 70 week of Daniel. No, it's just 70 week of Daniel. Be descriptive. Be accurate. Jacob's trouble is the last three and a half years. Why? Because that is the devil. He's a devil incarnate. The final pope of Rome. Which I knew when I was unsaved, by the way. I always knew it was final pope of Rome because I've been listening to Eric. Anyone that has been a long time Eric Phelps listener knows from day one he says the final pope of Rome is the Antichrist. He's not the false prophet. The false prophet is a Jew. Final pope of Rome is the Antichrist because every pope is a Antichrist. Okay, so when he's the devil, he's no longer controlled. He is the devil. The devil hates the Jews more than any any other race. That's why he's dedicated. He hates them so much, he's dedicated in a, the last three and a half years to Israel. So it's going to make the Holocaust look like a walk in the park. Because he's already built up anti-Jewish fury. Look at this. Look at the Jews. He, he slain the Pope. He slain that Pope. Got to kill these Jews. All this anti-Jewish fury, replacement theology, building up and all in this three and a half years. That's why God has to unconditionally, yes, I do believe in unconditional election. I don't believe God predestinates people to, to hell, but he does predestinate them to heaven. Explain the 144,000 Jews that he sealed. Explain that. Okay, they didn't have no say in their salvation. Whatever it says in the Bible, you have to take it as law. It's done deal. They're saved. Okay? Well, why do you do that? Because if you didn't, doesn't the devil will destroy all of Israel and set part of it? All of them. In the time of Jacob's trouble, the last three and a half years. Okay? 
So B, I mean, I can tell by how someone if he's messed up doctrinally, but just how he describes the terms in the Bible. Okay, it's seventy week of Daniel. That's the only term. That's it. Beginning of sorrows, abomination of desolation, abomination of desolation. Jacob's struggle, three, three parts in a seven year period. Seven years, God's number. Three, the Godhead. God loves seven and three. That's why after the time of Jacob's trouble, he's going to pull his bowls of wrath. How much bowls of wrath is it? Seven. Seven judgments, seven vials. Okay. So it's not the rapture, no. It's the blessed hope. Yeah, I know I know. you know what, what I mean by that, but don't use the term. That's all I'm saying. Use the term that's in the King James Bible. It's called blessed hope. Okay. There's three parts. You know there's three parts in your... Uh, Salvation, you know there's three parts of salvation. When you're saved, oh, so you don't mean you have to work? No, don't get my words twisted. I just means you are saved. You see by the day, till the day uh, redemption. But I'm just proving how God loves three. Three parts to your salvation. I'm not saying there's three types of salvation. I'm not saying there's three parts. Salvation is made of three components, similar to how the Godhead is made out of three components, three people, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's all I'm saying. Justification is the first part. You're justified. You're imputed with righteousness. What's the second part? Sanctification. What's the third part? Glorification. Okay. Justification, sanctification, glorification. Three parts. Three parts to your salvation. There's three parts in the... Uh, the 70... See, I was, I was about to say tribulation period. No, 70 week of Daniel. There's three parts to that. So when people say Jacob's trouble, what do you mean by Jacob's trouble? I mean the seven. No. Well, then Jesus clearly calls the first part beginning of sorrows in Matthew, I believe. Beginning of sorrows. And it, it, it clearly says in the Bible, the midpoint. To be a midpoint, there has to be a start and an end. God's not going to say start or end without naming them. Start point of the tribulation period. I'm describing it. Is the beginning of sorrows. The midpoint is the abomination of desolation. So what's he going to call the end point? Well, Jacob's trouble. Well, you can't call it two things. You call the whole seven-year period Jacob's trouble, and now you're calling the end point Jacob's trouble. No, the end point is called Jacob's trouble. The whole seven-year period is 70 weeks. Daniel. So for all those who are truly saved and truly is meditating the world, they, they know what I'm talking about. Because I know for the unsaved, and some saved people, he's being too picky. Two descriptors. Yeah, no, of course I mean, no, I don't mean that. Hey, I'm just saying every idol world will be judged. You rather me tell you this now or Jesus Christ said, you know, you should have listened to him. That's me talking to him, by the way. Okay? Every idol world will be judged. That's in the Bible. Okay? Careful what word you use to script, especially when you're using King James terminology. Go ahead and mess up the words of the world. Use it out of context, like racist, sexist, and bigotry. Go ahead and butcher those words and meanings. But when you use King James Bible terminology, now you're using God's sacred word for every word of God is pure. Okay, Every word is in the King James Bible. God uses, he doesn't just, yeah, let me just use that word. No, he doesn't say that. Every has a purpose, so make sure you're using it correctly. So I'll end with that. I am for peace. When I speak, it's meant for war, and I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. Peace.